you know, I make this huge pots of this, Ziploc bags, put it in the freezer, come home on a cold night after skiing or whatever, ice fishing for all you ice fisher people out there, and uh, pull it right out of the freezer and you got an awesome meal with all these summer vegetables. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna build the base of this minestrone. I'm gonna try to peel this. Uh, it's gonna blow away, but you know, hold with me. And with the fresh thyme, you just kinda wanna pull it off the stalk like this, and then you wanna get rid of the stems. So now we got all our stems off the thyme. We're gonna get into our oregano, peel that off. Big, that was a lot easier than the thyme. You wanna take these guys and just kinda chop them up. A little rough. I'm gonna throw them right back in the bowl here, and I'm gonna start chopping these tomatoes. Beautiful heirloom here. And you can leave these kind of big just because what you're going to get after you braise it down is this sort of a almost a sauce. And so when you're eating this in the winter, you can taste these beautiful summer tomatoes. And that's an absolute joy. We're just going to use a bit of this onion. I want those kind of bigger pieces too, just because we're going to stew this for a little bit, probably about 15 minutes. So now we're going to get some olive oil into our pan here. Beautiful brazer. I mean, look at that already. Now we're gonna add a little bit of garlic here, some fresh garlic. Probably one fat clove right there. And his little brother. A little salt and pepper. And just to get a little cheeky here, I'm gonna chuck in a little bit more olive oil because tomatoes love olive oil. You want a light simmer on this guy. So now what we're going to do is start the base of this guy. We're going to do the onion. First with the onion, next with the carrots here. These guys you can just cut in half and then in thirds. You know, and the great thing about a minestrone is that you can just cram all of these vegetables into the stew and it doesn't matter. You can put a whack ton of carrots in there. And it's okay because the carrots are so delicious and good for you that if you want to have more carrot in there, you can do it. It doesn't have to be equal parts this, equal parts that. And what I like to do is just cut off the ends, cut them in half, and then put them in a bowl of water. Let them sit for a minute. And while you're doing the other veg, that's a great time to just have that soaking there. Get that dirt out of there. All right, leeks are done. So now I think we're gonna go into the, uh, the curry squash. This guy, this winter squash is so gorgeous. You gotta be very careful when you're doing these because these have a tendency to kind of run away on you. A vegetable peeler is actually a really nice way to do it. You just peel it like an apple. It's a good little trick. Cut this guy down. All right, done with the pumpkin. Now we're gonna start with the potatoes on top of this. We're gonna do little tiny thin, thin rounds on this guy. I'm gonna cut him in half. And just make sure when you're doing this kind of thing, you got big pieces of squash and stuff here. We're gonna saute all that. But when you're thinking about other things that you're gonna throw into it like potato, just think that you kind of have to match up timing with this guy. You want them both to be cooked together. Stop! <laughs> All right, so now we're finished with these potatoes. I'm gonna add them to this bowl here. So now with our leeks, I'm gonna put them right on top of the potato because they are really good friends. You can keep these guys in half moons. They're pretty, they're pretty small, so, but I'm just gonna quarter them up a little bit here. So we'll start with the white end. I'm gonna go pretty fine on the white. And then I'm gonna start getting a little bit wider of a cut on the green part here. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go back to our tomatoes, see what they're doing in here. They've been on for about 15 minutes, so I think they should probably, they've reduced down, they've broken down. So I think these guys are ready to come off. We're gonna get another pot up here. This whole soup is really, really fun to make. So enjoy yourself, open some wine, take your time with it, talk to it. And then we're going all in right here. So we got our winter squash, we got our carrots, we got our onions in there. And as you look at that right now already, that's a lot of vegetable. 
And that just means you're gonna be eating a lot of vegetables later, which is a good thing, always. So you're gonna make sure that's all coated with the oil there. Then kind of simmer the, the stirring down and then you wanna season it, some salt and pepper. But this is such a beautiful start to a six month relationship because we're gonna have this in the freezer all winter. So you take your time now and you're gonna be rewarded later. This has been on for about five minutes. You can start to see the, the uh, pumpkin breaking down a little bit, the carrots softening, the onion is just softening and starting to be a little translucent here. You get to see a little bit of the brown caramelization on the pan. So this is the time that you're ready to add the garlic. This is about three, wow, that is three cloves. Big fat cloves of garlic. Stir that around. We're gonna add our leeks and potato. The aroma coming from this pan is just absolutely intriguing and amazing. And so gorgeous that it was all grown right here. Leeks were harvested about an hour and a half ago by Ken and Erica. Check those guys out. Look at them over there. To finish up the, the saute is this beautiful fennel. I love fennel in the minestrone, so we're gonna use some. So into the bowl with these guys. We're actually gonna add the, uh, the beautiful uh, full circle peppers in here as well. These guys I'm gonna go kinda, kinda small. And later on you can ask yourself, what are those little green things in there? And I'll tell you, they're peppers. These aren't just peppers, man. These like a pepper from a farm that was picked just a little bit ago. The flavor is so different. I can't even tell you the importance of getting local produce. So, and we're gonna go with these guys. Get the fennel and the peppers, and give that a stir. Everything's starting to break down a little bit, getting nice and sauteed. These are all still very al dente, including the potato. I'm gonna season that up a little bit with some salt. But everything's, the, the, the sauteing has done its job. So there's no liquid on the bottom of the pan and that's kind of when you know it's ready for some stock. All the liquid has been cooked out, boiled away, sauteed away. So this is a, just a rich, nice chicken stock. And this is actually three quarts. So now we got our chicken stock and all our vegetables heating up nicely here. And what we're gonna do is put this little stew into hyperdrive and add our tomatoes. And look at that, look at the change in color in there. They're so much fresher, brighter. And they traveled, I don't know, what is that? 70 feet? Instead of over an ocean. To me, that makes a difference. Supporting local people, eating delicious food. I mean, you win. And we're gonna finish these guys. Just take the tops and little squiggly tails off and that's it. Very important to have these vegetables thrown in at the last minute of cooking. I'm just gonna go kind of rough on these guys. And for this guy, we're gonna check and see how many seeds we have in the center here. Take off the outer, you know, centimeter or two like so, and use that and then save this guy here for like a vegetable stock. And what a great way to eat your vegetables. I literally could eat this soup twice a week. We're gonna take our turnip, the rest of our turnip greens, we got some baby kale here. For me, I chop it so it's not all stringy. Yeah, more kale. That's exactly what it is. It's more kale and you're gonna eat it. Minestrone will eat kale, like no problem. But you won't be like, this is nice kale soup, bro. Sweet. Look at that bowl, stuffed full of kale and turnip greens. Another reason that I love minestrone is that last night I did a dinner party and I have all these green beans left. Um, I'm gonna just throw them in there because they're already blanched. We're gonna keep them with the kale, chop them, 
and put them right with the kale. So this guy is ready. It's talking to me because I've been talking to it. How you really want to taste to see if it's ready is to get a potato out of there. And the potato is amazing. It's been sucking. It's been eating the minestrone stock and it tastes like all the other vegetables. So what we're going to do now is take our turnips and our zucchini here and we're going to fire those guys in there. We're going to add just a taste on top of them of salt because if you miss steps along the way of seasoning here, what you're going to end up with is a soup that's unbalanced and also you have more risk of over seasoning at the end. Oh, I almost forgot my favorite thing in minestrone. This stuff, the escarole is so beautiful and so different. I don't know why I love it so much. Take off the ends and you, with this escarole, you want to keep it kind of big, little half inch pieces, maybe a little bit bigger. All right, so we're gonna put the lid on this guy, bring the heat back up with the turnips and the zucchini in there just till it's simmering. Then we're gonna add our other stuff. So be back in five. All right, so coming back to our beautiful minestrone, we come up to a, uh, a small simmer there. So what we're gonna do, I cooked off at home separately, of course, some flagiole beans and some cannellini beans. And now we're gonna go in with our kale and our beans here. Here comes the turnip greens. So we're gonna hit those guys again, just with the appropriate amount of salt and pepper. And what I'm gonna do is just kind of stab this down in there, not necessarily stir it. And then I'm gonna let that sit for another couple minutes. So now we're just gonna do a nice little crumpled chiffonade on these. Hopefully they don't blow away. Okay, there's our beautiful basil. Maybe time to give that a stir, to get those greens in there. So now we are gonna add our escarole. So what we'll do is bring this guy back up to a simmer, add the basil, and then it's done. Heavy simmer in here. We're gonna go in with the basil. We're gonna give that a stir. Okay, we're still simmering. Lid goes on. Heat goes off, that's it. It's that easy, you can do it. Here's our dish, this is a Full Circle Farms vegetable minestrone, gorgeous. Mm. That's money. Yeah, this says fall. If any dish right? she has, mm. yeah. Mm. This is what fall looks like, even the colors are. Yeah. Mm. Well, Thanks, Ted. Thank you, and yeah. we just want to tell you how much we appreciate you guys coming out to the farm and making these miracles out of what we grow and, and it's just been such a contribution to the local organic movement here.